let's continue. Okay, so now that we've kind of introduced uh, what we're looking to do and done a little bit of setup and housekeeping, uh, let's actually do some work. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to create a new particle system. I'm right clicking in the hierarchy and choosing create particle system. Now what this is gonna do is create a new empty game object and let's actually turn off our flames for now. Just deactivate the game object. And so this is gonna create a new particle system with the default particle material. You can also just create an empty game object and add component effects particle system and that will create it without the material and it'll just render these uh, pink squares. This is, you know, maybe a useful, oh, and I made that as a child, right? This is maybe a useful representation of what the particle system is, right? It's just a bunch of quads, which are billboarded towards the camera. They always rotate to face the camera, right? But they're actually just flat squares uh, with a texture on them. And this is what they look like with no texture or no material. All right, so let's delete that. And let's turn back on our particle system. And so what we're going to do is we are going to set this up to mimic the, and let's just move it over a little bit so it's not right on top, and let's move it up a little bit so they're not spawning inside the ground. And we are going to set this up to mimic our main flames particle effect, uh, this guy right here. All right, that's how we can let that, let that run. So... I'm going to select my particle system. I'm going to call this flames2. And so the first thing that we're going to do is I'm not going to... So, okay, a little disclaimer before I go any further. I'm not going to cover every single parameter in the particle module. You can see there's a, about a million of them. There is a live training by Mike Geig where he does just that. And I can link that to you guys later on. And I'll link it on the archive page as well for folks who want that. I'm going to be looking more at how to create this specific system and I'll discuss a little more depth on the new modules. Just FYI in advance. We're not going to start completely from scratch, but we are going to talk about the relevant options here. So right now, the first thing that we want to do is we want to turn on pre-warm, right? And the reason for this is that we, if we have a looping system and we don't want to see it sort of start with no particles and have them work their way up, uh, then we're gonna use pre-warm. Okay, so the what's gonna happen is they're gonna start with none and they're gonna work our way up. We want them to start in midstream, sort of in the middle of the loop with some particles already in the air, and that's why we turn on pre-warm. All right, the next thing that we're going to adjust is the start lifetime. And this is the lifetime of each individual particle. The speed, on the other hand, controls how much speed they have when they leave the emitter, right? This is currently set at five, which is why they're moving away from the emitter once they're spawned. We're gonna set that to zero. So the movement that we're gonna create is not gonna be done using the speed, it's gonna be done using the new noise module. So by setting this to zero, they're just gonna kind of sit and cluster around the emitter. We're going to set the start size to be a little bit larger. This is the size of each particle. We're going to make it two. And then we are going to move on to the simulation speed. The simulation speed just controls the overall speed of the entire system, right? This is just a useful way that you can speed up multiple parameters at the same time. We're going to set this to two to get the whole system running a little bit faster. Now, you could just go and set each system, each parameter to a doubled number in the system, but this is just a useful shortcut. Uh, and I asked Roark about why he had used this in this case, because I wanted to make sure there wasn't so something I was missing. And he just said, it's just an easy way to speed everything up. Just FYI. Okay, so play on awake is gonna be true, right? Because we want this to start playing as soon as the scene starts. Um, and these, we're gonna leave all these default values. Okay, for emission, we're gonna drop it down a little bit. So the emission is how many particles are gonna be spawned per second. Right now it's 10, we're gonna drop it down to five. So we can see, right, we get sort of a smaller set of particles there. 
they're spawning less often. Uh, now, the shape is currently set to a cone. We are going to set it to a circle. And we're also going to just tighten the radius of that circle a little bit to 0.65. Now there's a number of different shapes you can choose from here, right? We can have a box or a sphere. Uh, in this case, we really just want them to be emitting from this radius here, so we're gonna choose a circle. And we can leave the rest of the uh, values there. Uh, and then we're gonna move on to velocity over lifetime. And so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna add a little bit of movement uh, along the y-axis, which we can kind of see here. So what we're gonna do is we're going to, currently we have single values for the x, y, and z, or z axes. Um, these are going to be the velocity of any individual particle uh, over its lifetime. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna switch this from a constant, right, a single number, to a curve. Now notice we have some other options. We can do random between two constants, which we will use later, and random between two curves, which we won't end up using. Um, but so we're gonna select curve, and now we have a curve for each of the x, y, and z, or z axes. Now, these are all displayed down here in the particle systems curve. One thing that may happen uh, depending on your editor layout, is it's possible for this to become hidden. You may need to just click and drag this up so that you can see it. So we're going to edit the Y axis. So I'm gonna actually click on these two curves so that they're not displayed anymore. You see, you can hide them from the display or you can edit multiple curves at the same time, which, which can be useful. Now, what I want is, I'm just gonna copy the curve from my inspector here, which I'll just pull on screen, which is going from just over zero, around 0.1 up to one. So actually, so I could go in and sort of do this by hand, but just another tip, if you're actually copying directly, which in this case we, we happen to be, you can just right click on a curve and hit copy. And this will work for all types of curves um, in the Unity Editor. I'm just gonna copy that, right click, paste, and we're gonna set the space Right, the space is currently set to local. So notice that it's kind of blowing towards the camera, which is a little weird, right? Uh, that is because, for reasons I confess I don't fully understand, all of these particle systems are originally created with an X rotation of negative 90. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set this, instead of local space, we're gonna set this to world space. So now it's moving upward, right? And already you can see we're starting to get a much more fire-like movement to our particles. Now, the next thing that we wanna do is we wanna deal with color. So we are going to move down to the color over lifetime module and we are going to activate that. Now, the color over lifetime, the default is a gradient, right? And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on this and in the gradient editor, we are going to duplicate the gradient from the original system, which looks like this, right? Now, instead of going through and setting each of these values by hand, what I've done is I've saved this to a preset, and you can do that just by opening the editor and hitting new, and you can see a bunch of the other gradient pre presets I've saved in the past. So you can create a new preset, or obviously you can go in and edit the values by hand just by clicking on the start point, the end point, so we're going from this kind of, oops, I added another point. You can add other points just by clicking, right? And then we also have some alpha going on. We're staying at the full alpha right up to the end and then quickly tailing it off to zero. So I've got that saved into one of these gradient presets. So I'm just going to click back on this gradient and just select my preset that I've got saved, right? And so this is giving us this lovely, very fire-like particle system, just using the default particles and color and a little bit of movement. So let's add some change to the size over lifetime. So the 
size over lifetime, which is here, we're going to activate. And this we're going to set as well to a curve. And so I'm just going to take this and this curve we want to go from 1 down to about 0.5. So we're going to just pull it down and I'm just going to use the handles here to adjust the curve a little bit. So as we can see now we're getting these nice, we're kind of shrinking the particles as we get up to the top and we're getting these nice fiery effects up here. So depending on the style of your game, if your game was more sort of flat texture style, uh, you could really get a nice effect going here. Or you could go for square textures, right? If you wanted to do kind of pixel fire, um, already you could get a nice effect even without using the textures. All right. So let me just pause there because I don't want to spend, <clears throat> I want to take some questions before I move on to the noise module, which is what we're going to do next. So let me just look at the chat and see how we're doing. Make sure that the velocity over lifetime is not set to local space, but instead world space. Um, and so you want to make sure that that's moving up in world space, not in local space, because that would be forward along the Z axis. Somebody's asking if I added the particle system to the ground object. No, I did not. This is a new, just right click in the hierarchy and choose new particles, create particle system here. Or you can go to um, game object particle system as well. Somebody's asking, can we save these? Yep, you can just save them as prefabs. That's what uh, all of the existing settings are here. Like this flame one is found under misc effects, I think, prefabs. Where is it? No. Oh, fire explosion, prefabs, flames effects. And they're all here. These are all the prefabs for these. So, yep, they're just prefabs.